Education Fund. You can find that on page one, wherein your uh, slide book. We confess our sin before God and for one another. Creator of all things, we have failed to care for all that you have made. We have squandered resources and oppressed others. Forgive us for what we have done and have failed to do. Teach us how to be stewards of your creation with care and nurture. Amen. Please join in singing the Kyrie song that's on page two.
We receive now the entire forgiveness of all our sins granted as a gift from a loving God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And we'll sing together uh, the journey of praise, page three. covenant. You kept your promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when you returned to deliver the Israelites. Your faithfulness saved your people. Teach us to trust in your faithfulness. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Exodus. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed 
the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to you, the Israelites, and say, or if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, your, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. But Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now that you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, please send somebody else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What of your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak fluently. Even now he is coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. He indeed shall speak for you to the people. He shall serve as a mouth for you, and you shall serve as God for him. Take your hand, take in your hand the staff, with which you shall perform the signs. This is the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please uh, join us for the Song of the Word, page 4. <laughs> verse this morning is John 8 uh, verse 58 Jesus said to them very I, very truly I tell you before Abraham was I am this is the gospel of the Lord please be seated I invite the children who are here to come forward at this time and if one of their parents or both of their parents uh, would come also please This is, this is going to be interesting. Okay. All right. In our story today, we heard about God who heard the people who were 
were suffering. And sometimes when you read that story, it kind of seems like God wasn't really paying attention. And they had to make their sons know. So here's the thing. We've got to learn, we've got to figure this out. So I want all of you, you kids, I want you to think these words in your head, okay? I want you to think, I'm hungry. Now just think it, okay? Just think about those words really hard. Okay, think it really hard. Close your eyes, think it. Moms and dads, can you hear them? No? No, they can't hear you. Okay, are you still hungry? I mean, you're not, but we're going to pretend that you are, unless you did eat breakfast like I did, and I'm hungry. Okay, now I want you to not just think it. I want you to, I want you to say the words without making any noise, okay? Moms and dads, did you hear them? Okay. They still don't know that you're hungry, okay? Or that you're pretending to be hungry. Now I want you to say the words, I'm hungry, but I want you to say them so soft that it's even hard for you to hear. Okay. Can you hear them? No? All right, they're still sitting there. They're still with you, right? There, there they are, mom and dad, mom and dad, mom and mom. They're still here, but you're still hungry. Okay, now we're gonna have to do it a little bit louder, maybe. I want you to say the words in a whisper. Moms and dads, did you hear that? Oh, they heard it. But, you know, if they're in the middle of washing dishes or reading a book or something like that, they might not have heard you. If they were really busy doing something, if you just whispered, I'm hungry, might not have been good enough. Do you think? Okay. Or if the radio was on or if the TV was on or something was happening. So you're going to have to say it at your normal voice, okay? Okay, go ahead. I'm hungry. Okay, did you hear him that time? Okay, but you know what? What if they were distracted? What if they were sleeping? What if it was 2 o'clock in the morning and you woke up and you needed a cookie because your stomach was growling and mom and dad or mom were sleeping? Would they still hear you if you said it in a normal voice? No, probably not. So what are we going to have to do to get mom and dad and moms to, to understand that you're hungry? What do you have to do? What, what, what kind of voice? Well, yeah, that would work. What are you going to have to do with your voice to make them hear you? Yell. Okay, now there's a lot of you here, and I know you know how to yell because I've heard it before. So I want you to give your best shout, I'm hungry. Are you ready? Go. I'm hungry! Could you miss that? Did, you, did anybody miss that? Okay. That's how it was with the I think that's how it was with the people who cried out to God. And it's how it is with us sometimes. We think that we think that God isn't hearing us because nothing is going right. But we forget that God is always with us. And that sometimes we need to make ourselves known. Sometimes we need to pray out loud. Even if you're all alone, you need to pray out loud. And if things are really bad, sometimes you need to yell at God. And it's okay, because just like you yell at your mom and your dad that you're hungry, God, God will be there. And they will pay, and just like your mom and dad pay attention, God pays attention. You know what the good thing is? That even when we say it in our heads, or we whisper it, or we say it without our voice, God still knows what you need. God still knew what the Israelites needed, and he came to help them. It is our job, our job as God's people, to make sure that we talk to God about what we need. So let's say a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being here with us always, as you have promised. Thank you for sending Jesus to be in our hearts, so that when things aren't going right, we can remember that you are with us and that we need to talk to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.
okay, well, now I know that you're hungry, so I know that there's a basket of treats out there somewhere. Oh, there they are. Go ahead, go grab a treat. Moms and dads, thank you so much for helping today. Did you hear in the passage that we read from Exodus how many times Moses said, but God, four times I counted because it struck me so funny that Moses was so adamant about not doing what God wanted him to do. And God was so persistent with Moses about explaining to him, about being patient and moving him along and supporting him and answering all of his concerns. And yet Moses kept saying, but God, I can't. Who am I? But God, I can't. Because I don't know your name. But God, I don't know how to speak well. And finally, my favorite, I'll just send someone else finally. And God got angry. God's, how did it, how did it, uh, how did it go? God's anger was kindled toward Moses because he'd had enough. We do this. We are such Moses among us, among all of us. God says, I want you to go next door and bring your neighbor an apple pie. Because you're a really good baker and she's really hungry and she needs some company. And we say, oh, I don't have any apples. I can't really do that. There's apples on the tree. Well, I don't really have time to make a pie because I don't have the, I mean, I, I have to go, I have to go do something. I need to get my hair washed. Well, no. It'll wait. Your neighbor doesn't care if your hair is messy. Oh, but you know what? I don't, I think I'm kind of still angry with her for not cutting the grass the right way. I don't think I should go. Hmm. Maybe it's time for you to get over that anger and reconcile. And finally, we just say, no, I'm not doing it. And we have that choice. We can say, no, I'm not doing that. And then we, and then we have to live with those consequences. We have to carry that around with us, that we know that God asked us to do this one simple thing because it came into our heart, that's what we should do. And as we ignore it, as we ignore that, that request, and as we continue to kindle our own anger toward our neighbor, Things get just a little heavier. And finally you say, well, it's just an apple pie, for goodness sake. Why is this laying on my conscience, conscience so hard? It's not about the pie. It's not even about your neighbor. It's about you and God. And what you and God are going to do together, and what God wants you to do, to be his hands and his feet and his mouth and his light. What am I going to do? Who am I to do that? I can't do it. It's too hard. Moses had some pretty legitimate concerns. I mean, he really did. He's one person. Who is he to go to a nation 
to a pharaoh who has all the power and say, you need to let all of your slaves go because God said so. That's a pretty legitimate concern, honestly. And isn't it amazing how when we listen to God, we can do really surprising things, really amazing things. We can go to people that are in great power and say, I don't like the way you're doing things. And maybe they listen and maybe they don't, but you know how the story goes with Pharaoh. Pharaoh didn't listen. And it wasn't Moses who brought the plagues. It was God who brought the plagues. It wasn't Moses who turned the blood or turned the Nile into blood. It was God who did that. Moses finally trusted the Lord. Moses finally said, okay, I have no more excuses. I guess I'll go. And I imagine that Moses was still reluctant. Still scared. Still anxious. And still not understanding what it was that he was supposed to do. And then we hear what God said to Moses, even though his anger was kindled. I will send you your brother, and he will speak for you, and you will be me for him. And I will be with you, and I will put the words in your mouth, and I will show you what to do. It's about God. And it is about you, and it is about me. Deciding whether we're going to listen to what God needs us to do or if we're not. If we're going to be the hands and feet and mouth and light of God, or if we're just going to sit in our kitchens with a pound of apples and not share them the way that God has asked us to share them. We need to decide if we're going to sit in our living room and complain about everything that's going wrong, and Lily wants to hear some legitimate complaints, just like Moses had. Or if we're going to stand up, if we're going to decide that I can do one thing, I can treat my neighbor better, I can have respect for people who don't respect me, I can write a letter, I can put my complaints and my concerns into something positive, something that might change, not the world, but maybe the world for one person. God will be with you. In all of the readings that we've had so far in the Old Testament, it's about God promising that God will be with us. In any situation and in every situation, we also hear the words from the Israelites, and we hear the words that, Jesus, that the children taught us today. Sometimes we gotta yell. Sometimes we need to yell at God. Look, I'm doing my best. Help me out. Or look, I can't. I can't even move. Please help me. Sometimes we gotta speak. Maybe not to somebody in this world who will refuse to listen. Sometimes we got to speak to God. And because we know that God's promise, God's covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses are the, is the same covenant, the same promise that God gives you. I will be with you. God will be with you. Hang on to that and be ready. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able. We will use the statement of faith on page six in your book to confess our faith together. We believe we are chosen by God, our creator, to participate in the ongoing work of creation by holding life sacred and being good stewards of God's gracious gifts. We believe we are chosen by Jesus Christ, our Savior, to participate in the ongoing work of spreading the good news of God's saving love and serving others in the name of the Lord. We believe we are chosen by the Holy Spirit, who calls us through the gospel to believe in Jesus Christ, gathers us as a community of believers to worship together and support one another, and enlightens us with gifts of love, forgiveness, and everlasting life. We believe the Holy Spirit nourishes our growth, preserves us in faith, and keeps us in God's grace forever. receive our offering at this time. If the children um, would like to bring up offering, um, they can sure do that now. Our offertory song is page six in the Chosen People. presented to you in faith, and use them for your mighty work in the world. Deflect and dodge the responsibility you've placed on us. Help us 
past our doubts, our misgivings, and lack of trust in your promises. Lead us boldly forth for the sake of your gospel. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. We are as much enslaved now as we have ever been, O Lord, not by shackles or bars, but by our short-sighted greed and callous disregard of the vulnerable and powerless. Bring us to repentance and reconciliation with each other and with all your creation. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. As seasons change and uncertainty, uncertainty visits us daily, plant within us an assurance of your steadfast promise, which has never forgotten us nor left us to flounder on our own. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are who you are forever, and one word from you can bring about the healing of all. Visit us with your transformative spirit and surround with your presence those whom we lift up, especially those we name in our hearts. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. We stand in a long line of servants who followed you without knowing exactly where you would lead them, but trusted nonetheless. Make us worthy to share their company and bring us all at length to your eternal kingdom. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Steadfast and loving God, gather these prayers we have offered, both aloud and silent, into your loving arms, for we know that you are faithful and will never abandon us. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join in singing the communion song on page seven. He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and after he gave thanks, he gave it to all who were gathered there saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one family through Jesus Christ, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and all who are gathered here are welcome to come, taste, and see that God is good. We need two helpers.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this body and blood of Jesus Christ, for this bread and this wine who, have, who strengthens us and feeds us, who gives us the, the courage and the, the power that we need through you to do the things that you have called us to do. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with his countenance and give you peace. Amen. I have a lot of announcements to share with you again. I like that this is this time of the year and we have all sorts of things happening um, in our congregation and in our community. We are looking for one or two people to volunteer to teach Sunday school for the fifth through eighth graders. Um, if we get one person, then you get to do all the work and if we get two people, then you get to share. And if we get three people, then you don't have to be here every Sunday. So talk to your friends, talk to the people who are sitting around you and say, I think that the fifth through the eighth graders need to have Sunday school, so I will help. That's what I, that's what I want, I pray that we will be able to do. Um, please call me, uh, text me, send me smoke signals. I don't care. Just let me know that you want to help. Our worship next Sunday will include liturgy, prayers, readings, and songs from a service that was developed by Vicar Jonathan Oldhorse, Reverend Larry Peterson, Reverend Sonia Pillman, and uh, Reverend Dan Johnson, and Pastor Eric Fohn. This service was um, a prayer vigil that was used and held in June uh, for a remembrance of the 215 children from the Kamloops Indian School whose bodies were found in unmarked graves on the premises of that boarding school. We are doing this worship service to remember those children, but also the children and the survivors of, um, of the, the Indian School boarding school movement that happened in this country that took children away from parents. Um, in an attempt to remove their heritage. If you have orange, you should wear it next week. There's a sign up on the bulletin board for bringing snacks for kids connecting through Christ. So if you have, um, if you have the ability and the willingness to share some snacks with your kids, we had 19 children here last Wednesday. It was awesome. Nikki Creech, Steph Olin, myself, Sawyer Huff, um, lots of people, Kim Davidson, lots of people have worked to bring this up into, into being. So thank, thank you all of you for, for helping and if you can bring snacks. The kids are always hungry at 3.30, always. So please help with that. Um, church council meets next Sunday after worship. Starting this Wednesday, there will be time for prayer in the sanctuary. If you want to pray alone or if you want to pray with me, I'll be here from 7.45 to 8.15 on Wednesday evenings for prayer time. If you have something that you want me to pray for or about, please just let me know and I'll make sure that I add those to my prayer. I would ask that you would keep in your prayers Bob Brown. He is the son of Anna Mae and Donald. Donald Brown. He is in, um, he's having some severe head and mouth health problems. He's in the hospital in Sioux Falls. Um, I believe he's still in ICU. He was as of Friday. As of Friday, he was still in ICU and they're trying to get things under control. So please pray for him. Um, are there any other prayer concerns or joys for the congregation? Yes, I do. Well, Laura was uh, in the Houston Hospital in the 
really well. Thank you for reminding me. Laurel Hansen, after her back surgery, has been released to the swing bed at Wheaton Hospital. She is sharing um, the floor with Iron Man Betty. <laughs> I, I think the nurses are busy. <laughs> because they found each other. And I imagine that as soon as, that, as, soon as, as either of us, both of them are able to walk better, they're going to be going to be crazy. Well, they already are. Um, if you have a few moments, even even longer, please stop at the hospital and visit both of them. I know that they appreciate that. Please pray for Eddie that he be that his esophagus starts working again. That's kind of the holdup right now. He needs to be able to eat and swallow. Um, so pray for that. And then you have to teach him how to sing because I was visiting. And the speech therapist was there, and she was trying to get him to sing and go higher and higher and higher, and he gets stuck at one note right there. Because I don't sing. <laughs> go sing with him. Um, are there any other announcements for the congregation? Yes, Courtney. My friend Allie, who had open heart surgery a few weeks ago, is on her way home from Duluth. Um, so just pray that everything goes good. Oh, prayers answered. Allie Schonsberg is on her way home from, from Duluth, from the hospital. We need to continue to pray that she, um, that she makes this transition from hospital to home very well and that um, she continue to heal. Thank you for sharing. Other prayers. Oh, we had a, uh, a birthday just yesterday. I yes. heard. But uh, going along with the rest of the service, we might have to yell. She's over there. So let's sing it loud. Or oh, Ruby. Ruby. I'm not telling how old she is. You gotta ask. You, you gotta ask um, Jim. That's not, <laughs> not my place, man. Maybe we sing loud enough. She'll hear. She will hear. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. brought treats. I don't know if it was for her birthday or not, but <laughs> lots of wonderful treats. Bev and um, Pam and Ruby all brought treats. So please stay for fellowship time and for um, Sunday school. Let's sing together our Sunday song, page eight.
Jesus. Jesus loves you. Thanks be to God.